My wife actually was looking for a vanity mirror for her makeup station here, and she had a few criteria. She wanted one with 10 light bulbs all the way around, and you need to have an outlet for a hair dryer and straightener, all those things, and it also needed to be dimmable. So she went online and looked around, and those things were four and five hundred dollars. Way too much for us. So I said, I will build you one. And this is what I've come up with. It does have the 10 bulbs, it has a power outlet, and it has an on switch with the dim option here. So you can dim the lights to a certain level and then bring it all the way back up to full. And it also is quite a large mirror, bigger than most of the ones that were available on the internet. So, uh, as a quick disclaimer before we get into the do-it-yourself portion, you are working with electricity, so make sure it's unplugged before you touch any wires. Hope you enjoy the video, and let's get started. To begin, I have two different pieces of PVC trim board. This is a five and a half inch wide piece, which is known as a one by six. And then I have this piece here, which is a one by two, and it is the same PVC trim, but a much smaller piece. Now, I know this is a non-traditional building material, but because it has such a smooth finish on it, I think it's gonna do quite well for this project. So let us measure the mirror real quick and then make some cuts. The mirror that I'm using for this vanity is 30 inches tall by 24 inches wide. I need to have four boards cut, two at 27 inches and two at 32 inches. So I'm gonna cut the 27 inch now. Next, I need to measure out and cut two 32 inch pieces. Now that I have the four boards cut, it's time to put them together. Now this is PVC trim, but it does not really go together with traditional PVC cement. I have this AZEC adhesive that is actually designed for this trim. I also have a long clamp and a piece of scrap wood that will be used to put this together. So I'm gonna use this on the edge of both boards here, and I'm gonna be as careful as I can not to get any spillover on the front side here. So, I just want to apply a nice generous piece on both the front and the back side here. Now this does give you a couple minutes of working time, so no need to be in a super hurry. Okay. Now, to get these together, I'm just going to Press them in here, and I'm going to use this scrap of wood over here to prevent any damage to the top of this, and then I'm just simply going to use my clamp to get this put together here. I have this clamp down nice and tight. Now this has to sit here for approximately 24 hours before we can move on to the next piece. So this is definitely a multi-day project. I have the two side pieces glued to the top and now it's time for the bottom. Now my clamps aren't quite long enough to reach the full length of this so I'm having to improvise with a board here. But I think it's going to work out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the ends down here and get this last piece put together. And I'm just going to span this gap here with a couple of clamps. I've set out the light sockets and done some measuring, and I found that I like two and a half inch by two and a half inch on the corners, and then the separation between the next set is going to be eight and three quarters, and it is two and a half from the edge. And it's the same way with the top here. So there's going to be ten total sockets. What I'd like to do now is measure these out and start using my hole saw to make a hole big enough for this piece right here to fit through this. So this is going to be mounted from the back side and all that will be seen from the top is just this white circle. So it should look fairly nice once it is installed. I've got my square set at two and a half inches. So I want to come up from this point and just make a mark here 
at two and a half. And then I want to also come up from this point at two and a half. So that top bubble there is where I want to make my drill point. I've measured and marked each of the holes. So now I'm going to use my drill to put a pilot hole into each of these spots to make it easier for my hole saw. Now that I have the pilot holes drilled, I'm going to use a hole saw. Now I found that a one and a half inch fits this fairly well. It's a little bit big of a hole, but it's the closest that I can get here. So I'm going to line up my pre-drilled hole and then use the bubble level on top of my drill to hopefully go straight down here. Not too bad. I think this mirror is going to look nice whenever I get it done. I just actually wanted a really nice mirror and I was looking at them on the internet and they really were about $500 a piece and I was just thinking there is no way that we're going to be paying $500 for a mirror. Now that all the holes have been drilled for the light sockets, it's time to get these blue junction boxes installed. Now these are low profile boxes because I don't want them to hang out the back too much. So my thoughts are I'd like to go eight inches from the edge of the box here. So I'm just going to make a mark at that point and then over here as well. And then from the bottom, I'd like to go up one inch on both sides. And that should give me enough space to still get the mirror installed. I'm just going to go from one inch up from the bottom. I've traced out each box here on the board. Now I'm going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill out two corners of this box. And that's going to be used so I can get the jigsaw into position here. Now I'm going to take my jigsaw and cut out the form that I've made here. I went ahead and did a test run here on the other one and it worked out quite well. So let's see if I can match that with this one. Okay, just got that finished. See how well the box fits in. Good snug fit. I like it. Now that the boxes are in, I'm going to put some screws in there to prevent these from coming back out. So I'm just going to take my drill and put some fairly small pilot holes in. Then I can just take a couple small screws here and install these. And that'll just keep this from getting pushed out for some reason later on. I'm using a curved file to take out some of the barbs that were uh, made when drilling these holes out. To bring power to this vanity mirror, I have purchased a nine foot cord that has the nice fabric coating on it to make it look really cool. Now, sadly, it was not a grounded extension cord, but I think it's still gonna be okay. <laughs> I'm going to take my wire cutters and remove the plug down here, like that. And I'm going to strip this back to get to my wiring in here. I touched the fabric with a flame real quick just to keep it from unraveling. And then I've split these into two. Now I need to get this through the back side of this box. So let me see if I can uh, find the opening down here. Now on a cord like this, there's a smooth side and a ribbed side. The smooth one is going to be the hot and the other one's going to be the neutral. So I want to put the smooth side on this color here, which is going to be a brass color. And then the more stainless steel color is going to be the neutral. So we get that stripped down real quick. 
Okay, smooth side here on the brass colored piece. Wrap that around and then get it tightened. Okay, let's flip this over and get this one done. Okay, so now power is running to this outlet here and that's going to be put into the box. But before we do this, I need to run the power from here underneath and back to the second box further down so that it can go to a switch for the lights. I've connected the lamp wire to the receptacle and it is running underneath here and through this box. Now I'm going to run this piece through the other side over here. And it seems a little strange to do, but I need my neutral wire to be connected because the dimmer switch is only going to break the hot wire. So I'm gonna just leave that connected. And now I can very carefully come in here and just cut just the hot wire. I'm going to separate those, keeping the neutral wire untouched. Now one of the main reasons I wanted to do this is because my boxes are shallow and this large dimmer switch is not going to allow a wire nut to connect those wires under there. And so by doing this, I can just lay that neutral wire down and it won't be in the way of this dimmer switch. Now I'm breaking up the hot wire only, so I just need to attach this one to the hot in, this one to the hot out, and it's that simple to get this switch wired up. The receptacle is done, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the decorative face plate on here. Now it's time to get the light sockets installed. I've installed the first one just as a reference, so it's time to get this next one in. First of all, I'm going to connect the wiring. So I've got the brass screw is going to be with the uh, hot on both the previous line and the line going forward. And so I'm just going to make a little loop in that. And that's going to loop around that terminal. And then I'm going to make a similar loop in this next one. And that's also going to go around that terminal. I'm going to do that on the other side so that as it tightens, it will tighten that down as well. Tighten that screw down. Now that that is done, I'm going to flip it over. And I've been using a pin that's been pulled out of its case so that I can make sure that this is even because whenever this is flipped over, you want it to be equal in the middle. So I've just been positioning that where it needs to be and then using a pin to mark that location. Like that. And then I use a drill to put those holes in there. Now do not go all the way through or it'll show on the back side and that would be bad. Okay, now <clears throat> I went to the hardware store to find some plastic spacers but they were too expensive so I actually just went with some 5 16 nuts here and then found some one and a quarter screws that can be used to put this together. So I'm just plopping this down here and then using screws to hold this into place. Seems to be working very well. And there we have it. I'm just going to continue along here until all of these are done. I just finished getting all of the light sockets installed and I have tested them all. 
and they seem to work very well. And uh, also, this does have the dimming option, and you can see that is working as it should. Now that the wiring is done, it's time to get the side trim pieces on. So let's see what we need here. 38 inches. And 38 inches, very good. Now with the side trim cut, I'm gonna be attaching it with the same AZEC bonding here that I used before. Now it's just a matter of getting this turned up here and using clamps to make sure that it is nice and secure. The clamps have sat overnight for 24 hours. It's time to remove them here and see what the results are. Looking nice. It is definitely glued on there well. So now I need to get the other side. And I also found that I had a faceplate for the switch here. So I can go ahead and get that installed as well. Because I'm using this dimmer switch, it sits up a little higher than the traditional switch would. And so sadly, this is not gonna make a perfectly flush mount. I'm not exactly sure what I can do to get around that. Both side trim pieces have had time to cure and they are done. So I flipped it over here and now it's time to set the mirror into place. So I'm gonna just put this right here in the middle and hopefully all of my light sockets are far enough away that they're not gonna be interfering. Looking pretty good. All right, so now what I want to do is just make sure the mirror is centered here as it needs to be. I now have the mirror centered where I want it, and I'm gonna use these mirror holders, just little plastic traditional mirror holders, and I'm gonna put two on the bottom and two towards the top. I'm just gonna mark here with a pin so I know where to pre-drill these holes. Now I'm going to pre-drill this hole just a little bit to get the screw started, making sure I don't go too far as to pop through the other side. These came with a one and a quarter inch screw, but that was actually too long. It was gonna pop through the other side of the mirror frame. And so I had to find some shorter screws. These are just one inch here, but I believe they are working quite well. As a means of hanging this vanity mirror, I decided to go with these D-rings. They have two screws and a D-ring up here. And I'm gonna use picture frame wire to attach this whole thing. And that should give me a little bit of adjustment room if this does not hang straight on a single nail. So let me just align this. I've got it 22 inches from the bottom. I'm not sure if there's an optimum height or not, but that's just what I've decided to go with. And then just holding this down and screwing it in would definitely be easier if I had pre-drilled, but I've moved inside where it's not quite so hot. Now that that has been installed, I'm going to run the picture frame wire through these D-rings. I'm gonna go around this one and bring a good six to eight inches back up that I can wrap to make sure that it definitely will not come undone. I hope you enjoyed this video. It really was not hard to build. The PVC trim was pretty much uh, finished whenever I got this done. Just be sure to uh, take your time and be careful when putting the glue together. You don't want it spilling over the edge of the gaps and causing a discoloration. Thank you so much for watching. If you know somebody that would enjoy this video, hit that share button. Share it to your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And that would be very helpful to me, and I hope it would help somebody else as well. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. If you look closely, it actually will give your eyes that uh, square look. Kind of creepy for me, but... It's what the makeup artists really want.